Did you know Jews can read each other's minds? But how would you know if you saw one? They could look just like us. Hi. You know what I am? Sid. A Jew. Gesundheit. Sheesh. That was intense. What am I going to do? No idea. Got it. I will go Burn down the house and blame Winston Churchill. So, where did it all start, acting-wise, for you? Um, my... I come from kind of um, an acting family, I guess. My, I'm a third generation actress. Etc. Etc. Et I loved you in Wall Street. So um, I don't know. I guess it's just something that I, I learned, like kind of being around my family and learning a lot through osmosis. And um, it's not something I always wanted to do. I kind of just fell into it when I was 13 and became really passionate about it. What was the spark at 13 that was like, I want doing I this? I did a film called Consent, which was a true story about a New Zealander called Louise Nicholas, who was raped when she was 13 by a policeman. And that abuse continued into her young adult life and it, and it turned into a group of policemen taking advantage of her. Um, and she came out of that experience and is today working with the New Zealand police force to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, so, yeah, just kind of, I, I, I did that and I, um, my kind of whole understanding of what acting is changed. It, it became more of a, I don't know, I realised I could tell important stories through acting and, and, and maybe make a, a difference somehow. Um, and also have, you know, learn things myself and be able to co become completely different people and yeah. That's what I wanted to ask. Do you recall the first time you stepped on stage or on a film set uh, where you pretended to be someone else that's not Thomas and Mackenzie? Um, and how did you feel about that? I think it was when I was nine. I did a, um, a film for the New Zealand Film Festival and I don't... I don't think I took it very seriously when I was filming it. I mean, I was nine, so, <laughs> but I remember having a lot of fun and kind of exploring this whole completely, you know, different world and, yeah. Um, so I'm curious, I'm always fascinated by research for film roles. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who studied, you know, World War II and the Holocaust, and I've had family that survived and didn't mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. what was your process like in research mm -hmm. in, for Jojo Rabbit? Um, well, I kind of, when I, straight away when I found out I had the role, I kind of immediately dove into a whole, as much research as I possibly could. Um, you know, doing, you know, reading Anne Frank and, and books similar to that and watching Schindler's List and, and A Beautiful Life and, you know, using the internet to find out as much as I could. And then once I arrived in Prague, I was able to go to places like the Jewish Quarter, go to the Old New Synagogue and the Spanish Synagogue, um, which have been incredibly well preserved over the years. And, and um, going to Theresienstadt, a concentration camp and ghetto outside of Prague, where Elsa probably would have gone if she had not been, if she, you know, hadn't been saved by by Joe, by Scarlett, by Rosie, and um, yeah, just kind of I don't know. Well, being in Prague was an education in itself because the Germans had occupied them, the Czech Republic, and. In Berendov Studios, where we filmed that, those studios were used during, during the war to film Nazi propaganda films. So even like being there, it felt like it had come full circle, and and that we were kind of I don't know. I don't know. It was it was it was eerie walking around those studios, which are so big, and kind of imagining the the Nazis that had been would have been marching around there, and 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 the lies that they were telling. Um, all right, and I love what you said earlier about getting into film and telling the story, not only to entertain, but to teach and maybe change mm -hmm. uh, somebody's feelings or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think that's great, because I also am a firm believer that something like music or film can mm -hmm. change the world. And yeah. it seems like you believe that too, and I love that. So can you yeah. elaborate on that a little bit? 
Well, I think um, I know, during during World War Two and World War One and the Great Depression, people used comics and books and film as a way to escape from the horrors that were going on in, in their lives. And um, so it's always been an important kind of therapy for, for people, I mm -hmm. think. And when you're going into a film, whether it's a comedy or a drama or whatever, a documentary, you're always going in it and you come out with a, having seen a different, you know, a different point of view, a pers perspective, and maybe having unconsciously gain something from that film, learn something, um, which is really, I don't know, it's an exciting idea to me to be able to be a part of that and, and to tell important stories. Um, and that's kind of how I, yeah, like, like I was saying, how I became passionate about acting was being given that opportunity to have a voice at such a young age. Um, yeah, I remember that I was working in New Zealand a couple, couple weeks ago and um, a man who was part of the crew of the film I was working on, he came up to me and he were, had worked on the film Consent that I'd done um, when I was 13. And he told me how much, of, how much that film had meant to him and how much he, as part of the crew, had learned from it. And um, he started crying right in front of me. He was this really big, you know, big, strong guy that, and yeah, he was in, in tears right in front of me and I was so like so incredibly moved by that and, and, and how much of an impact just this film had had on, had on somebody. All right, that was great. And I have one last fun question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you're a big fan of movies uh, and cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any certain scenes from movies that have always stuck with you that you remember constantly that you're like, oh, this scene is great? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's a good question. I think in the in the sound of music when Maria is singing I have confidence. I have confidence in sunshine. I have confidence in rain. I have confidence that spring will come again. Besides which you see I have confidence in me. I I, th I always think about that sequence and that song and and I don't know, it's so insp inspiring. I, I agree, I th and I think that when she's mm. teaching the kids to sing and mm. rhyme down a thing, I think that's a great scene. And they yeah. can't sing now. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Love the film, and looking forward to all your future projects, especially with Edgar Wright. Yeah. Uh, well, it's pretty awesome. <laughs>